morning, everybody. It is about 9.45 in the morning on the 4th of March, 2024, Sunday. It's a beautiful day, sunny. You can see all the water behind me. We had a lot of rain in the previous 24 hours, but uh, going to dry out today. Uh, right now, I think the temperatures outside are well above 50 already. Inside my shed overnight, it got down to 49 degrees and 90% relative humidity. So definitely got to have that little heater running to keep that under control tonight when I after I've sealed the tank. So today is a big day for me. I'm very excited. Uh, I'm going to be pouring the sealer into the gas tank today and following the, the directions to make that work. I'm not supposed to do it in direct sunlight. So once it warms up enough and the humidity has gone down enough, probably a couple more hours today before I actually do that, I'll uh, find a shady place outside to do the sealer in the tank. In the meantime, I've got plenty of other tasks to work on. Got those items I can uh, put back in my dash, and I bought some uh, couple things. Like I said, I was going to got some uh, rust-oleum metallic finish, rich shiny finish paint for that one dash piece I showed yesterday, and of course the little uh, rearview mirror attaching glue there. So I'll put that to be working on that stuff today. Just some detail work while I'm waiting for the temperatures to stabilize and the humidity to go down. So we'll go from there. While I wait for my humidity levels to go down, I'm working on the horns again. Having trouble finding someone that has a replacement for that Delcorini horn. The Ford branded horns, low and high, work fine. Um, this one I actually got to work though. And the uh, first thing I made sure is I had a good clean uh, piece of metal to ground on. Saw that in another YouTube video. And then I, it wouldn't work. So I started banging it on this bar over here and it started working. So I was like, all right, sometimes the old fashioned, you know, just banging something will get it working again. So now I've adjusted it a little bit with the uh, adjustment screw there, and it sounds pretty decent. I don't know how well you can hear that. It doesn't sound real clear, but I don't know really how it's supposed to sound by itself. So what I'm going to do is wire all three of them together like they're supposed to be and see what happens, see how it sounds. All right, I took my earbuds out so you can hear the horns. I tested all three of them together. They all worked when they were not mounted. So now I've got them mounted back in the front header here. And uh, my wire is not quite long enough to reach the battery. This is a thinner wire, but it should still work for a test. So let's see what these horns sound like now that they're mounted back in the car. Yeah, there we go. That's the Lincoln horn. That's it. All right. I, uh don't have my earbuds in, so we're going to honk the horn again. I've got my shield back in place, got the wiring all set back up. Now we're going to see what it sounds like with the horn button and see if I need to put a horn relay in this thing or not. Let's see what happens here. Okay, that's acceptable. Horns are finished. All right, folks, the big moment has arrived. I'm about to pour the sealer in my gas tank and start the sealing process. I've got everything set up here. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. I've got a tool here, that tool I used yesterday to remove the drain plug when I'm done with the sealer inside the tank to drain it. And I'll just drain it right back into the can that it came out of. Um, the temperature, as you can see, is 59 degrees. Relative humidity is 69%. Those are well within parameters that KBS coating specifies. So it's, it's ideal conditions, maybe not ideal, but good enough conditions to do this. Um, I'm not using tape this time because these, these rubber cork-like things work pretty well to uh, seal. And if I'm wrong, I can always add the tape. I've got it sitting right there. So, and I've got the other, other seal right there after I'm done pouring in the sealer. So I can rotate the tank continuously for up to 30 minutes. I'll take the 30 minutes to make sure I'm thoroughly done. So I think I'm ready to start. Just going to open up my can. I've got a, it, it has specific instructions on how to stir this you don't stir it like this you kind of drag it up from the bottom because of the metallic stuff that's inside there so i'll be doing that for a couple minutes before i pour it in the tank and i'll let you watch for a little while but uh, i'll shut it off eventually all right here we go i'm going to start to lifting this uh, sealer up in the can probably shouldn't set that on the ground and as it says in the directions drag it up from the bottom of the can as opposed to just stirring it. I guess you can stir it some, but you're really supposed to spend most of your time doing it this way.
And it definitely says do not shake the can. You don't want to form bubbles in there because that will affect the curing process. I hope my voice is recording. Yeah, it is. It looks like it is. I'm getting tired of having so much trouble with this recording stuff where half the time I don't even know that my voice isn't being heard, but it looks like you're hearing me right now. Yeah, I don't think I'll have to do this for very long. It's already pretty solid in color. Looks beautiful. That's what the inside of the tank will look like when it's all done. All right, I think that's probably good enough. Take that off there. All right, set that there, and I'm going to pour this in the tank. I'll make a big mess. I'm going to get a couple of paper towels here handy, just in case I spill it and make a mess or something. Here we go. Entire content of the can of the can goes inside. I do see a couple of bubbles there, but I'm assuming that's nothing to worry about. This kit is advertised to be good for up to 25 gallon tanks, and that's what this is. 25 gallons, so hopefully it, there's actually enough in here to thoroughly coat the entire surface inside the tank. There should be. Alright, I think that's good enough for that part. I'll let that drain a little bit before I put the plug back in place. I'm happy that the uh, humidity continues to drop. That's important. Uh, wipe out some of this residue in here so I can keep using this funnel in the future. All right, put the plug in place. Just set that there for now. I always have to be careful not to push the plug in too far. I don't want it inside the tank. I've already run into that one time. Okay, and I don't even know what time it is. I need to know so I don't go too long. And of course, I can't see that while I'm on the recording here. Uh, hang on a second. Okay, it's 11.20, so I will stop around 11.50. I'm just going to start by... Rotating the tank in different directions, slowly. Fortunately, this thing is not very heavy, so you know an old guy like me can handle this part okay. Although I'm sure if I keep bending over like this, I'll hear about it later from my back. The other direction. Try not to go too fast because that stuff has uh, got a consistency that's a little thinner than molasses, but not a whole lot. So I got to give it time to coat as I rotate through. And I still have my little pipe cleaner thing inserted in the vent tube. I have to remember to pull that out after I drain the uh, sealer out of the tank so it doesn't solidify and get stuck in there. Okay, so that's basically what I'm gonna do for the next 25, 30 minutes. So if you don't need to watch all that, I'll turn the camera back on when it's time to drain it. All right, folks, it's been uh, 30 minutes. I was the human cement mixer this time, rotating this thing through every angle I could think of, slowly, side to side, over, end to end. So I think I did a pretty good job. So now we're going to pour the remnants into this container it came in. I was using this bucket to sit on. That came in handy. Now I'm going to use it just in case. Now that doesn't really leave me enough room, so... Hopefully I don't make a big mess here. So I'm going to take this off. I didn't even tighten it all that tight. Oh, 
that thing had some pressure in it. I was expecting that. So now what I got to do is simply drain out the liquid, what's left, until it stops. And I just realized this is going to get heavy after a while sitting like that. So let me uh, find a different way of doing this so I can get some help supporting this. Oh boy. I wasn't anticipating this. Oh, there it comes. Okay. Probably would have been easier if I had, um, if I had, um, sat myself on the bucket. So you're supposed to uh, hold it like this until it completely drains, until it stops. And judging by the little bit that's coming out, I'd say most of it's staying inside the tank. I'm going to reposition myself. Oh, this is too uncomfortable. I'm making a little bit of a mess there, but this way I can sit here a lot longer. It's not something I thought about as far as how to better set this up so I didn't have to sit here and hold it like this. I just hope it uh, fully drains. I'm assuming the drain plug in this tank is positioned in such a way that it's designed to let everything drain out without puddling inside the tank. I sure hope that's the case. All right, draining the tank took a long time. You've really got to have patience during that step, but I finally got it done. What's interesting is that almost everything I poured in there came back out eventually. There's just a very thin coat on the walls inside here now, and I know you really can't see it too well. I don't have my light. That's one thing I forgot to bring over here was my light, but if you can see anything at all, you can see there is a shiny, you know, covering on the inside of the tank now from the sealer. So now the, uh, the curing process begins. What I'm going to do right now before the sealer hardens in that can, I'm going to um, take my brush here and paint some on the outside, cover up these, uh, these rusty surface rust areas. And that's it. I'm just going to do some spots, not not the whole thing. That's not necessary. But wherever I see some surface rust, I'll cover it up, and uh, and then just let it dry for four days at least. Looking good. I just checked the clock. That took me an hour and a half from the time I poured in the sealer to draining it out uh, and getting all of it out after half an hour of uh, rotating around the tank. So I got my flashlight now. So I'm going to carefully stick it in the side here. Let's see if we can get a view inside what it looks like. All right. I don't know how good that is focusing or not, but um, I don't have my glasses on, so I'm assuming it's okay. I should have put my glasses on before I put this in there so I can see. Okay, there we go. All right. Okay, so it looks wet, which I guess is what it's supposed to look like right now. So now it's got to dry for um, four days minimum, and I'm probably going to let it go a lot longer just because of, uh, it's going to get cooler and more humid in a couple more days before the drying process is done. And while I'm thinking about it, I need to pull this out of the tube so that it doesn't harden at the other end. Hopefully this will come out. You know, I may need my needle nose pliers. It's kind of hard to grab right now. So anyway, I'll grab some needle nose pliers and pull that little pipe cleaner thing out of the vent tube there. I'm working on several different things at the same time here, which can sometimes be dangerous. I, uh, I finished painting or going over the outside of the tank in the various locations that have a little bit of surface rust. So I've got all that done. I've kept an eye on the inside of the tank and discovered that there was a little bit of pooling going on in a couple of spots that I didn't like. I just noticed something else too right here in this room that I'm going to wipe out. This stuff is uh, very slow drying. Um, I guess that's not really a problem. That's where the O-ring's going to go. But anyway, um, yeah, I'm going to get a screwdriver and clean it up a little bit. But anyway, I, uh, I rotated it because I didn't want it pooling anywhere or puddling. So I think that took care of that. Then over here on the table, I uh, got this dash piece I talked about yesterday. I just finished painting it, at least with the first coat of the Rust-Oleum paint over there. It came out pretty good. Uh, I think it looks nice. The color match just happened to be exact, which 
I usually don't get that lucky. I mean, it's not going to look like exactly like the original piece, of course. There's no writing or anything on there, but uh, it'll at least not be all pitted and ugly and whatnot. So I'll take that, put that back in my dash like that. The other thing I'm working on is the carburetor linkage. It looks like the uh, my solution wasn't going to work right out of the box. So I started taking off. I took a piece off the new carburetor. This piece right here that I need to... Uh, I either need to modify this, which I could. I mean, I could cut a big chunk of this off so that it looks more like the original one and then use my original uh, clip that would hold the rod right there in that hole. I could do that. The other option I have is I could grind down where that uh, idle speed screw is. I could grind down that side a little bit and give me enough clearance possibly. So I'm deciding right now which way I'm going to go on that. You're looking at uh, my old carburetor and how this is set up here is a little different. It turns out this hole that the carburetor linkage, accelerator linkage goes into sits further back on the original carburetor. That same hole sits quite a bit further forward, like at least a quarter of an inch or more, maybe even half an inch that way more, which means I've either got to get a longer uh, rod, which I guess is possible, we either got to get a longer rod. The problem with that, of course, is the cruise control attachment point there. I'd have to figure out how to get that on a new rod, which I don't know about that part. Um, I wish I could uh, just take this piece off of this carburetor and put it on my new carburetor because that would be the easiest solution. My problem is this is permanently attached right there. I might be able to grind that off or drill it out and actually get it off and mount it on this one. That would be a nice solution. Um, so I'm still trying to figure out uh, the best way to handle this. Right now, I don't have a, uh, a good solution because that rod is just too short. So I'm, I'm gonna have to work my way through that. Here's my old carburetor again. I took uh, my rotary tool with a fresh grinding stone on the end of it here and just ground down the end of that fitting there. And I just got uh, one piece of it off. Just use a chisel to kind of force my way in there. This one is coming loose. My hope is that this will be the same size as the new carburetor fitting, and I'll just be able to slide it right on there. And that'll be such a simple solution and eloquent, and it'll work just beautifully, right? So I'm going to see what happens. I'm working on getting that off right now. So this little uh, rectangular piece, piece that goes right there, uh, is a little bit tiny smaller than that one. Maybe the difference between metric and SAE, I have no idea. But I'm just going to take my rotary tool again and carefully cut this opening a little bit bigger. It won't take much. Well, this is uh, one of those many, many challenges again. So I finally got my old uh, linkage on there for my old carburetor. And with this, my rod... It's going to work fine as far as the length of it goes, even though I haven't tried yet. I'm sure it's going to fit um, just fine, just like it did, you know, originally. The problem now is not that. I didn't realize, didn't notice that uh, the idle speed cam doesn't exist on my old one or it, uh, the screw was in a different location than it is on this carburetor. So that's this little piece right there that my fingers button. That doesn't exist on my original piece there. So now I have to come up with a yet another jerry rig here. I'm thinking I can just drill a hole through the side of the piece I just put on and just put a bolt through it or something simple like that. It gives it something for the uh, fast idle or the idle screw speed uh, adjuster to hit on. That might be enough. In the meantime, I guess I'll continue trying to find a adjustable rod that might actually work. All right. So what I ended up doing with the carburetor, so that I can my original throttle linkage rod there and make use of the old carburetors set up here. I discovered, as I said earlier, that the fast idle screw doesn't fit on that. It's designed differently, this, this new uh, setup here. So I thought I had a great solution and I did until I screwed it up. I put uh, one of these little uh, attachments on there that's actually meant for a different kind of Rod, rod linkage, but it happens to fit perfectly where the uh, where the idle screw goes, and it'll work. You know, it'll end up as my uh, cam or whatever you want to call it on um, this uh, linkage here that will allow the uh, idle speed to be adjusted. 
Um, the only problem is when I was drilling the hole out, it didn't occur to me that I should have just drilled it and then tapped it, you know, put threads in it. Then I would have been a hero. I could have screwed that right in, snugged it up, and it would have been beautiful. But I didn't do that. Instead, I made the hole big enough thinking I was going to put the nut on the other side, not thinking this through clearly that I didn't leave room to put the nut on the other side because of where I drilled it. It kind of had to be there anyway to line up with the, with the screw. So that was never really going to be an option. I just didn't realize it until it was too late. So you can imagine what that gray stuff is. That's JB Weld. So that's my temporary solution. That stuff works. However, I'll know if it gives way when my car dies, when I let go of the gas pedal, because that means the uh, uh, idle screw isn't engaged anymore. So hopefully that doesn't happen in this holes for a long time. I probably need to look for a longer term solution than this. Uh, if nothing else, cannibalizing another Carter AFB carburetor with this style uh, piece on it and drill the hole properly, that would be one solution. Uh, another solution would be to get an adjustable throttle rod. Uh, if anybody has successfully done that on a, a newer style carburetor like this, I don't know if Adel Brock uses the same kind of setup as this or not, but if you uh, have any suggestions on that, I'm all ears. But in the meantime, I have a solution. I just have to let this stuff dry. I'll let it dry overnight, and then I'll finish putting it back together tomorrow. And assuming it holds and everything, I'll be done with, uh, with a new carburetor all that for now. Uh, the other thing I got done today, as I mentioned earlier, is the horns are back in the car. They work great, so that's all sealed up again. My uh, my gas tank is now sequestered in the shed. I've got my little heater set up to come on to keep it warm enough in there and the humidity low enough so that will continue to cure. Um, I painted my little dash panel piece so I can start uh, picking up on reassembling the dash, the rest of the dash tomorrow. I'll have tomorrow off so uh, I should be able to get uh, quite a bit more done tomorrow and then it'll take a full four days plus for that gas tank to cure so I'm in no rush to put that back in the car. I want to make sure that's had plenty of time to cure. So y'all have a good evening. Thank you.